You're listening to Three Kitchens Podcast, hosted by home cooks, Erin Walker and Heather Dyer. Join us as we walk you through our experience with a new recipe, successes and fails. Let's all get inspired, cook better, and eat great food. Hello and welcome to today's episode of Three Kitchens Podcast. My name is Erin Walker, and joining me is Heather Dyer. Hi, and I have no idea what we're recording about, and I love and I've it. Just, and I've just said, it let's just go. just surprised me. <laughs> we were on Zoom, and all of a sudden she goes, okay, let's just record this, and she turned it on, and here we are, and I'm looking like, what? What? I'm catching you like a deer in the headlights. Ta-da! That's right. All right. Well, I figure um, we're wrapping up the year here. This is going to be one of our last recordings of the season where oh, yeah. we're cooking things and I want to get this going because I'm feeling it. I would like to make something called scotch eggs. Ooh, scotch eggs. I say that as though I know anything about scotch eggs. I've only seen them. I only know them by picture. (laughs) Yeah, and I have a vague idea of what it is, but I've never eaten one and certainly never made one. So this is fun. I see them as pub fare frequently um, in days that I used to go out. I was going to say, how often do you go to pubs? I never do. (laughs) Sadly. About 20 years ago, maybe I was seeing them. Um, (laughs) But uh, I've seen people order them before and they look great. They're not a great share item. So it, I wasn't like, ooh, can I get in there and get on it? But uh, essentially, a scotch egg is a boiled egg that is deshelled, wrapped in sausage meat, coated in breadcrumbs, and then either baked or deep fried is what they say. Oh, baked. Huh. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. know about that. I... As much as I hate, I'm thinking I hopefully can pan fry these. We'll see. Like a shallower oil fry. Yeah, just like a shallow oil fry and flip it over a few times. I feel like the shape is going to make this difficult. Yes. Which is probably why they're typically deep fried because you can submerge the whole round thing. So, I mean, maybe I can try baking them if you just like coat the outside and brush oil on it and then pop it in your oven. You just need to get that sausage meat cooked. Mm -hmm. This is also going to put me through the curse of having to boil and de-shell a whole bunch of eggs. (laughs) Yes, we've had this conversation before. You know, our listeners really dropped the ball on this one because I posted that reel and I begged (laughs) people to tell us what... How do you boil your eggs so that they peel nicely? And no, I think we had one person maybe make a comment and like, come on, you guys. (laughs) I know that you know how. (laughs) I have boiled eggs recently because I've been making egg salad sandwiches for my sourdough bread because it's Mm, the best sandwich in the world. And I thought, so I've been trying different methods of boiling. Mm Mm-hmm. I cannot say with any certainty I have found the magic that works, but I can tell you the ones that don't work. Okay. Well, that's I, half the battle. Okay. So the, in case nobody's experienced this before, sometimes when you go to crack the egg after you've boiled it and peel off the shell, it does not come off in one beautiful, you know, there's a bit of a skin underneath and then you pull it up and it just unwinds off the shell. No, you get like most of the white coming off. You have to pick at it and you get chunks and your egg looks like it's been like gnawed on (laughs) before you've even like, Yes, it doesn't look pretty. You're not making deviled eggs out of that. Let me tell you. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Because it's ugly. Well, and wasteful. It's wasteful because the white is like gone with the shell. Right. So So I looked up some hacks for this. One of the ones that I saw was putting your hard boiled egg into a jar with some water and like you shake the jar vigorously with your egg in there and then it all comes off and pops out. Oh my God, no, Heather. (laughs) (laughs) This did not work. I had a yolk and like a completely 
destroyed macerated white that just like that is so funny it did it not work even at all sound like it would work people say this like oh put it in a jar and it'll just take all the shell off and ta-da no it did not work so i can say with Ugh, firm no. practice that did not work in removing this problem um i have found that when my eggs are fully submerged in water because i get lazy or I'm like, well, I want to use my little pot and it doesn't quite cover the eggs. Mm -hmm. That almost always leaves me to having to pick away. Whereas if I have a nice deep er pot, which has more water, takes longer to boil, blah, blah, blah. That seems to be working better. And I've been adding in vinegar because I've also heard that that helps to. Right. So that's been working okay. Again, I like... It's really hard to test this because it's like every batch of eggs is different. It's a crapshoot. Let's be real. Yeah, it's not like every egg in that carton comes from the same chicken or has been there for the same amount of time or blah, 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 blah. Like I, just I recently boiled eggs because when, when we eat ramen, we like to, ooh, at least some of us in the family, like to cut a boiled egg in half and toss that on top of our ramen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a pot of three, because three of us like eggs. I had three eggs in a pot. Mm -hmm. One of them peeled beautifully, and I was like, oh, my God, what did I do? Like, I didn't even know, like, how long they'd been <laughs> on the stove. I had no, like, obviously, I wasn't making notes. I just, oh, no. I was like, I figured it out, and yet I don't know what. What did I do? <laughs> that was only one of the eggs. The other two oh. eggs were a complete, like, choppy looking. I mean, they weren't the worst ever, but they mm. they were not great. So I was like, oh. Oh, so no, it was no nothing idea. I did. It was complete no. luck. Yeah. Somehow this one egg turned out great and the other two were like, meh, fine. Yeah. So the thing that I'm reading with these scotch eggs is that you're boiling an egg and then you're cooking it again. So mm -hmm. your egg is getting very cooked. Right. And so there is, you kind of want that egg to be... What's the word I'm looking for? Not gummy on the middle, but like jammy. Jammy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You want your yolk to be a bit jammy when you cut into the scotch egg. Oh, it's so, the best kind of boiled egg with the jammy yeah. yolk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be the second challenge for me is right. getting the right <sighs> texture inside, which I won't know until the very end. When you slice it. Yeah. Oh, oh, so. Man. You can hold me up to the standard of I'm hoping to have a jammy center, which means I have to figure out how long to boil my eggs for to begin with, which could complicate the peeling process even more. Oh, boy. I just, you know, because we love setting ourselves up for challenges, good challenging moments that make us swear and laugh. It really exercises our cursing vocabulary. Well, that's the thing. You know, I got to <laughs> get practice some new words. Practice maybe. up. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how this goes it does anything go with the sausage to hold it on there like is there a binding ingredient or anything or is the breadcrumb <sighs> kind of holds it on that's a great question i haven't really looked up a recipe yet mm. i've only looked okay. up the theoretical side of scotch eggs yeah. so when i run through the recipe in the second half i should be able to give you some more detail but i'm gonna guess that we're making kind of like a sausage patty like I was thinking especially if you bake it um, or you're pan sort of shallow frying it where you need to move it and turn mm. it uh, yeah, how will it not fall apart I'm shrugging <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah I forgot nobody can see us we're both nobody like can see us. we're both like going ah. I don't know. <laughs> the little I don't know emoji you like can just pop that up <laughs> I send that it's probably my most sent <laughs> yes. emoji I'm always sending a shrug yeah, that's how I feel about that answer. So yeah, yeah. this will be a bit of a fun experiment. I think this is kind of a fun idea because they can be eaten warm or cold once you've cooked them up. And I think this would be kind of a fun picnic item or hike thing to bring with you. You know, as we go into camping season, mm -hmm. you could cool these, keep them keep them chilled and then pack them along. If you wanted to heat them up, you could probably do so in a pan easily over the fryer or over the fire to kind of get them heated. And I think this would be a fun thing to eat outside. Mm-hmm. Sounds maybe, good to me. Maybe have like a little 
salsa or something on the side. I feel like we need like a little bit of acid kind of with all these rich, some pickles. Yeah. Think pub, maybe yeah. some olives Ooh, yeah. or a pickled something and some spicy mustard. Mmm, yeah. You need something kind of to break up all of the intense deep fried sausage fried egg. <laughs> you got really creamy, heavy flavors, so you need like that complimentary piece on the sides. Pub fare on my backyard patio. How mm -hmm. about that? I always like having pub food at home. I don't need to go mm -hmm. out to the loud, stinky pub anymore. Too old for that. <laughs> Are you ready to be part of normalizing conversations for women surrounding self-care, emotional health, healthy boundaries, and embracing all of our beautiful complex layers? Well, then you're in the right place. I'm Melissa Crook, host of The Feel Podcast, Finding Empowerment, Embracing Layers. Join me and my guest each Tuesday as we have these conversations and create supportive and authentic spaces to go on this journey together. Well, we're here to talk about the sausage egg surprise that I left <laughs> <Surprise>. with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had a lot of fun changing plans at the last minute. And instead of making a hen egg scotch egg, I came across quail eggs at my local grocery store. And I was, I stood there at the cooler and I looked at them and I gave my grandma a mischievous smile and said, Ooh, <laughs> I'm doing these with the quail eggs. <laughs> Oma approved. <laughs> Oma was like, what are you doing with that? I was like, oh, I got a surprise for Heather. <laughs> <laughs> and when you handed them to me and I like yes. peeked in there, I was like, oh, they're so small. Like what kind of eggs are these? I'm thinking you found like some really fun free run chicken eggs that were just like super tiny because I was like oh so cute but I didn't even it didn't occur to me they might not be chicken eggs yay mm -hmm. surprise, surprise until you sent then you texted me your little video of yourself yes. later that was like I was like and, only watch this once you've eaten one yeah <laughs> these took a little bit longer to make than I was hoping they would <laughs> so after I finished these up I called it in and we went out for dinner <laughs> that night. <laughs> <laughs> that happens sometimes. Yeah. Even though I spent all day in the kitchen yeah. cooking, I was like, yeah. yeah, there's actually no food to eat now. So this is out. not dinner <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I think it worked out pretty good. I was fairly happy with the texture and how it turned out inside. Cause I wasn't sure not only changing up the egg, but then you know, trying to get it to a doneness that we like, because when we discussed this earlier in the first half, I wanted them to be kind of jammy on the inside. And I was worried about over boiling mm -hmm. the chicken egg. And I was like, Oh, boy, this is gonna be even harder with a quail egg. But I think the instructions I got turned it out pretty well. The little package came with 24 quail eggs. Mm -hmm. I ended up hard boiling or soft boiling 15 of the eggs. And so I just gave them a quick wash and then I boiled them in a pot with vinegar in hopes that the shell would release a little bit easier. They only sat in that boiling water for two minutes. And then I took okay. them out and put them into a cold water bath right away. So I had them in like a strainer that sat down in my pot so that they wouldn't be hard to find and dig out of there and overboil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I put them, just submerged them in the strainer and then took them out and plunged them into a cold water bath. That's a great idea too. If you're worried about sometimes when you plunk an egg in there, if you're worried about it cracking in the process. Yeah. So my regular go-to for making hard boiled eggs is I put the eggs in cold water and then I put them on the stove and start the process mm -hmm. and this was like not an option because of the smallness of the eggs I think they would have been overcooked if I would have gone through that so instead it was bring the water to a boil put the eggs in and I like always crack my eggs doing it that way so I thought the strainer worked mm -hmm. pretty well for that I didn't have any escapees <laughs> but unfortunately they were not super easy to peel. Um, um, I did find though, as I, cause I had 15 to peel 
it took me about two minutes an egg. So oh this was God. like 30 wow. minutes of peeling eggs to get all these little pieces of shell off. Oh, wow. But I did find as I kind of went on in this is that if I crack the shell and then I put it back into the cold water and let it sit in there. So I went through and cracked a whole bunch of them to begin with and let them sit then it was much easier to release the peel like sitting in that cold water with the water kind of getting underneath the shell and the membrane that oh. kind of helped it become easier to release and it definitely had like a oh. thicker membrane than a hen egg too oh, like you kind of had okay. to yeah. get in there like you could see the membrane and kind of pull on it and you had to like really oh. give it a good it was a thicker membrane for sure did you see that <laughs> hack that i i think i sent it to you or so it was one of those like i don't know if you ever have seen they're called stitched videos it means you take somebody else's video and then you basically add yourself onto oh, it anyway, right okay i matter. know those that, videos i didn't know the name of it so now i've learned <laughs> that's like sometimes you see it says stitch incoming which means i'm gonna be jumping in here in a second anyway it doesn't okay, matter cool. but this person had seen this other person doing this video and so then he did he wanted to try out the technique himself so he First, there's the video of the guy. He cracks just the, I think it must be the wider end of the egg. Right. And right. peels off kind of like a cap, like just mm -hmm. the end. And then he slides a spoon in and twists it all the way around, takes the spoon out, and then it basically just takes the whole egg with it. Like that nicely boiled egg comes out. And so this other person was like, what? Okay. I'm going to try this and it worked for him too. And so then I was like, oh, next time I boil eggs, I'm going to try that trick. But I, I didn't have a small enough spoon to do that with. <laughs> okay. Not for quail eggs. Maybe not for quail eggs. Yeah. But I think with chicken eggs too, it would be like really hard to get it. Again, if that membrane is not releasing from the white of your egg. Yeah. You essentially are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> There's no solution to this. You just like, I mean, uh, pull up a chair, put on your favorite podcast <laughs> and peel them eggs one tiny shell piece at a time. Uh, that's all I can tell you at this point. And listen, if you're making scotch eggs like this, you're covering that egg anyways. So you're not really going to see all the imperfections as long as you get exactly. enough of the egg actually intact in the middle of the thing. <laughs> and you do have to be winning. careful because these are soft boiled eggs. Yeah. So I have never soft boiled an egg. So this was all new news to me because this was very soft. Like you could really squeeze. Oh, wow. I could tell the middle was liquid. Oh, there gosh. was yeah, like yeah. I had just really sealed the outside of the egg. So for some reason, at first, when I was peeling these, I was terrified there was going to be like a baby quail inside. I don't know why. <laughs> that was just like totally <laughs> ridiculous. It was fine. There was no quails in my eggs Good. Duh. and then <laughs> so after that fear subsided I started realizing like just how soft it was like you could just like smoosh it that's fragile and you'd be done so yeah. it made kind of getting underneath that membrane a little bit easier because you could kind of smush down into the egg it wasn't like it was a different thing to deal with for sure so this did work. I was able to mm -hmm. peel around these eggs. Mm -hmm. I had one that I did rip into the center when I was peeling it. And I was like, oh, no, but I was able to just kind of like, it was the first one that I covered in sausage so that mm -hmm. I could just like get it sealed Smush in it. <laughs> and hold it together. So that went okay. So then after I had these ready to go, um, I had a 500 gram of bangers sausage. Wow, we really should have done some British research because here I am pulling out all these words that I don't know what they mean. <laughs> what is a banger? <laughs> What's a banger? I have no idea, but what it goes is this with accent? mash. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. That's what it is. I'm not going to think it's like a breakfast sausage. It's not There's spicy. There's no Italian spices in yeah. there. Yeah. Like it's a fairly run-of-the-mill sausage. Anyway, a package mm. of five full-sized bangers. I just removed the membrane, tossed it into a bowl, and then you mixed in fresh thyme with it. So to give mm. your sausage some extra yum. Yeah. So I, I weighed out 35 gram meatballs essentially, and then just smashed them flat in my hand and rolled the egg up. So I found that a long, thin, 
kind of piece of sausage that I flattened in was easy to roll the egg in and then you just kind of seal the ends up. Okay, I get it. Kind yeah. of like making a cylinder, oh. imagine. And then they held together really quite well. Oh. So I did that whole step and got all my eggs covered in sausage. And then you take one hen egg and beat it up and breadcrumbs. And you dip your sausage covered egg in the hen egg. You roll it around in breadcrumbs and then you shallow fry it in a pan. So just both sides for a few minutes. They brown pretty good. You can kind of check the browning as it goes and then just flip it over. And then I arranged them all onto a baking sheet and then into a 350 degree oven for six minutes and then they're done. Oh, okay. So it was just a whole bunch of steps that depending on how good you are at peeling your eggs or how mm -hmm. fast you are at wrapping them in sausage. They just take time. Yeah. So and how big your pan is, how many did you fry at one time? I was able to do half and half. So I did like mm. seven in one pan, eight in the next, because they're fairly small and they fit in my like nine inch cast iron pan that I just put like a, I just poured oil in there until it covered the whole pan. What kind of oil did you use? Canola? I used canola or sunflower mm -hmm. and they toast up great the next day because we had them the next morning for breakfast. Oh, so I just breakfast. tossed them in the toaster oven and like, I think I could have air fried them also in the toaster oven, but I didn't think ahead enough to be prepared for that. Okay, you were thinking of air frying from the start. That yeah. was, that's an interesting idea. Actually, I'm wondering if yeah. I could have done that, but I just I didn't look into like how to cook the sausage. I had again <laughs> kind of yeah. a disaster going on in the kitchen. So it's also kind of small. You could fit more of them in the oven. I didn't want to be at a point where I cut it open and had raw sausage inside. Yeah. So I figured yeah. this was let's just play it safe and do the pan fry oven bake mm -hmm. dealio. So quail eggs, Heather. Yeah. Well, like I said, I didn't realize. I thought they were just <laughs> it abnormally small eggs. I really didn't think much about it. I, I don't know that I've ever eaten quail eggs. I probably have and just don't recall when, mm -hmm. um, but I don't buy them typically. So I wouldn't say there's a difference in the flavor mm -hmm. of the egg. Not that I noticed. No, I didn't notice one either. So cute. They're kind of like a little three bite scotch egg i just really i love the like the size of them yeah very tasty i mean whoever thought of this idea of putting sausage and egg to, like it's basically the whole breakfast put together some breadcrumbs you got the whole thing together in one it's a little ball bite. for breakfast it's yes. like the per it's like a breakfast sandwich with low carbs <laughs> it's just so smart it's so it's genius yeah. and i put a little um spicy mustard oh, the german mustard yeah. that i buy over at edelweiss uh, that i love and i just was like as i was eating i was just dabbing a little bit of that hot mustard on there mm, it was delicious i really enjoyed these i'm a little disappointed to hear how much work goes into it because i'm not <laughs> sure how keen i am to recreate it even though i really want to eat them again and i shared them with one of my kids who mm. likes eggs the other doesn't so he mm. didn't care that he missed out <laughs> and the two of us were like, when can we have these again? That was like, so, so good. I would say, based on my experience of doing this now, I would make them for breakfast, but make them the day before. If you're going to host like a nice brunch or something, mm -hmm. you can make this ahead of time, oh. have it done, and then boom, you've got these wicked, yummy, different kind of breakfast things. I would not put this as evening pub food at all. This is breakfast. <laughs> yeah, I don't think of eggs as like pub food. I don't know. There's something about having eggs at the bar. <laughs> so weird about that. Oh, so did you also have the pickles oh. that I included? I totally just watched your your brain <laughs> pattern go because I thought the same thing when you were about to comment on pickled eggs pickled at the eggs. bar I, and then you just jumped to pickles <laughs> and pickled onions oh I love those little pickled onions where did those come from those came from the grocery store oh I've never come across them they had these little jars of either sweet or salty pickled onions and I was like mm, 
sweet. No, I want something like good and sour, sour pickled onions. They had the little jar of the little guys. Delicious with it. So good. I was like, bite of sausage yes. egg, pop a pickled onion. Oh. Bite of sausage egg, pop a pickled onion. How many times have we said almost anything, any savory dish yes. needs a pickle of some kind? This just like was the perfect little addition to it. Yeah. Good call. I'm so glad you went along with my crazy quail egg idea. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm actually really happy I did that because I liked the ratio of egg to sausage. Mm. Delicious. I, I yeah. Really, I yeah. think this was perfect. If you're going to experiment with quail eggs, like totally go down the sausage egg path. Love it. Listener, go make it. You're going to love it too. Mm -hmm. There's my song for the day. <laughs> That was terrible. <laughs> and now for the fine print. Links to recipes and other things we talked about in this episode can be found in the show notes or on our website, www.3kitchenspodcast.com. Come say hello on Instagram, Facebook, Threads, YouTube, and TikTok. We'd love to connect. And if you enjoy the show, pass it on. Word of mouth is the number one way people learn about new podcasts. Thank you so much for listening. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs>